Welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today we're going to make a pie. We're making a butterscotch pie with meringue. And we're outside not because it's cool or it's just that I ain't been out here in a while and I just thought I'd bring y'all to the outdoor kitchen today. But this is an old fashioned butterscotch uh, meringue pie and I've had some requests for it. So it's an easy pie to make. So we're going to get started on it. And I'll show you the ingredients. And you'll probably pretty much have all the ingredients that you need for this pie. Over here I've got a, a nine inch uh, deep dish baked pie shell back here ready for me to put my pudding in. I've got, in here I've got two cups of whole milk and then I've got two thirds cup of uh, cream. Now you can use 2% milk if you want to, but you know if you're going to be using the two-thirds cup of cream is kind of defeating the purpose but you can do that and that does help but there's two cups of milk whole milk and two-thirds cup of cream I've got a cup of packed brown sugar and you can use the light or you can use the dark whichever one I've got three beaten egg yolks I've got a fourth a cup of uh, you can use cornstarch you can use flour arrowroot whichever you have in use I've got three tablespoons of butter, a half a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of vanilla. So I got my heat on about medium high. And I'm going to pour my milk in here. I'm going to go ahead and put my three egg yolks. Now, a lot of recipes want you to put them in later but anymore when I'm making my cream pies I go ahead and put my egg yolks in I'm going to put my brown sugar I'm going to put my cornstarch or flour whatever you're using a half a teaspoon of salt and y'all can probably hear the birds in the background now, I'm not going to put my butter or my vanilla in until I get this uh, cooked and good and thick. Now, <clears throat> I think a lot of people have trouble. They say that their, uh, their custard pie filling, it's always too runny. And, you know, I've been making pies for a long time, and I always cook my pie fillings and I never take them off the stove until they're good and thick in my pot. A lot of recipes that tell you to cook it, you know, bring it up to a bowl and cook it for a minute and pour it in your pie shell and then people say, oh, I got a runny pie. I never take mine off the stove until it's good and thick. So I never have that problem. So you can see how my butterscotch pie is going to be light in color, but if you use a dark brown sugar, and you can even darken your light brown sugar with a little bit more molasses, you'll have a darker butterscotch pie. So like I said, I've got it on medium high. I'm going to let it come to a, let it come to a bowl, and I'm just going to keep stirring it on medium high. And when it starts to thicken up a little bit, I might turn it down to a medium low until it gets pretty thick, thick enough the consistency that I like. So it shouldn't take very long. When we come back, we'll pour it in our pie shell and then we're gonna make our meringue for it. It's getting thick. You don't see how thick it's getting. And it took, what, about five minutes, maybe, to get that thick. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn my burner down just a little. And it's really thickening up good. And I'm going to put my two teaspoons of vanilla. I think I'm going to take it off the heat. Stir that in good. And I'm going to put my three tablespoons of butter. Bring it back over here. Let it melt that butter. Just 
just let it keep thickening it up for me. And like I said earlier, it's gonna be mine's gonna be a light color because I used light brown sugar. Now you could even use um, half and half. You could use half light brown sugar, and you could use half of dark brown sugar, and that'll give it a real pretty color, a little in between where it's not too dark. So I'm still gonna let it cook and thicken up just a little bit more. That way I know it'll set up good. Now, as it sits though, and as it cools off, it will thicken, you know, it'll set up good. But a lot of times you'll think you got it where it needs to be and it won't set up very good. And I've had times, you know, as many cream pies as I've made in my life, I've had times that, you know, it didn't set up the best. Then I've had times that done just perfect. Now you can see that consistency. And I'm still looking for just a little bit thicker. Now I don't know much about, uh, I know they have stevia um, not sure about some of the other, is there, I guess there's splen Splendor or Splendid or something, and then there's Stevia and then some different ones, but there may be a brown sugar Stevia or something out there. I'm not sure about all that. Uh, y'all that have to watch your sugar though, y'all know what I'm talking about and y'all can use that in this, uh, in this recipe, make you a pie with it. Because I know there's a lot of y'all that are diabetic and have to watch your sugar, so that would work too. Okay, I'm going to take it off. And I've got my baked 9-inch pie shell. And I like to put it in my deep dish because when I put meringue on this pie, I'm going to put it where it covers the end of this crust. And the reason why, because it'll keep it from as that meringue cools, it wants to pull away. So when I do it this way, it'll cover that and it'll keep your whole pie covered. That's a pretty pie crust. Yeah, and I'll put a link to my video pie crust down in the description box. So now we're going to Put all this stuff up and when we come back we're going to get our meringue together and get it on the pie and then we'll get the pie in the oven. And I get to lick the bowl. And yeah, you get to, I forgot I had my spatula out here. People have been getting on to me for not scraping my pot. And the reason I don't do that is because Mr. Brown, I always let him have what's left. Yeah, y'all taking away from Mr. Brown. <laughs> so I'm leaving it for you. <laughs> Don't take away from Mr. Brown. <laughs> we're back in the kitchen, and we're going to make some meringue for our butterscotch pie. I come back inside because it's cooler in here. Uh, my pie's not going to set up outside, but I didn't want to make my meringue outside either because it's too humid. So we're back in the kitchen. Let's make up some meringue for our pie. Okay, let's get started on meringue for our pie. I've got four large egg whites. And this is a really easy, easy process. Now what I'm going to do before I start to put anything in here is I'm going to bring this to a froth. And what I mean by that, I'll show you by what I mean when I say bring it up, you know, to a frothy stage. Okay, this is what I mean by your, your frothy stage here. And this is when I add my eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And I'm going to turn this back on and we're going to whip it till it gets to a soft peak. Okay, here I've got it at a soft peak. And what that means, you can just see how it's just kind of picking that, made one little poof there. 
and that's about the soft peak stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add me about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to start adding my sugar to it. I'm going to put about two teaspoons at this point. I'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to let it uh, mix a little bit more. Okay, it's getting to where I want it. I'm going to put two more teaspoons of sugar. Now, if you like your meringue really, really sweet, you can put more than that, but four teaspoons is all I ever put in my meringue because I don't like it just overly sweet. So I'm going to mix this just a little bit more. You don't want to over mix your meringue. Okay, I'm at the point that I want to be. I've got a pretty good uh, peak going on there. Some people call it uh, your soft peak and then your your harder peak there. But you can overdo your meringue. So this is about the consistency that I like. So let's get it on our pie. So I hope y'all I don't I don't know if the camera's getting, you know, a good shot of this, but it's still warm. I like to put my meringue on while it's still warm and get it in the oven. But I love the color of this because this is a butterscotch color. I really don't, you know, it don't have to be any darker than that. But this is a real nice butterscotch color. So now we're going to put our meringue on. And if you don't like meringue, you don't have to. At this point, you can just put you some uh, plastic wrap on your top of your pie and put it in the refrigerator and let it get cold and then take it out and put you some whipped cream or some Cool Whip, whatever you prefer on it. And it will be delicious. This will be one of Mr. Brown's favorite pies. He's not had one probably in a while, but he absolutely loves anything like butterscotch or caramel or anything like that. So, so now we're just gonna dippity doo da here. And it don't have to be perfect, but the one thing that I do like to make sure is that I get it sealed on the edge. Y'all, if I don't sound too <laughs> too active today, I've really not felt good today. So I apologize if I'm not up on my happy, cheery self. And I am happy and I am cheery. <laughs> just not as much. You know, some days you just wake up and you're just like, it's not that you're sick. You just don't have the energy and you just kind of feel pooey but needless to say I'm not so sick I can't make y'all a pie or feel too bad to make a pie so I've got it sealed all the way around so now what I'm doing is I'm just taking the the edge of my spatula here and you can do it any way you want to but this is the way I like it because I like to have all them little things you see sticking up, the little meringue spikes, I like for them to get really, really crispy and brown. That's why I like doing it this way. So, all I got to do now is I lift my oven on out in the outdoor kitchen. And I'm going to put it out there on uh, 400. And I'm going to let this get real good and brown because I like my meringue brown. Really brown. So, we'll be back in just a little bit take this time and I want to thank everybody that has been so kind to me and Mr. Brown but I have gotten recipe books so many this past year um, 
if I had them all out here, I'd have a pile of them. But I would love, I'll probably make a video of me going through them. Some of them are really old, old, handed down cookbooks that I cherish so much that I want to thank y'all for thanking of Miss Lori, sending these books to me that you had and you cherished, and now they're going to be in my home and in my kitchen for me to cherish. Just got it out of the oven. Oh my, what a pie. Good and brown on top, that's the way we like it. So I'm gonna take it inside and we're gonna let it sit up and cool. And then probably about three hours from now, Mr. Brown taste it for us. See if it's any good. But meanwhile, I think we're gonna go on a road trip. Okay, so we went to Mammoth Springs and we ate uh, some pretty good walleye. So we went and ate some fish. And before we went and ate, we stopped at a flea market. And we did pick up a few things. So I'm going to show you what we got. And uh, then we're going to taste that good pie. Even though we're too full from eating all that fish, we're still going to eat some pie because there's always room for pie. Okay, I'm going to show you a few things that uh, we just picked up. Just a few things that we saw. We just, the main reason we even went was try to find me a, a secretary desk. And I really would rather have an, an antique one than to buy, you know, anything new or halfway new because it just wouldn't look right in the cabin. Um, but anyways, I found these lids, and I'm not sure about the date on these. And I, they were sealed, and I opened them up. They were $3.75, and I looked them over, and the lids are still good. The seals are not dry rotted or nothing for them being pretty old. I mean, I don't know for sure. I know they're over 10 years old. But like I said, the box was still sealed and everything. But they are still in good shape. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people are having a hard time finding jars and lids. Um, I've got a lot of jars. I'm good on jars, but lids, I'm trying to get as many as I can find, and they're hard to find. And I've had a few of my subscribers that have sent me brand new lids, and I appreciate them so much. So I got two of those, $3.75, and then I found these, just the regular uh, care mason jar lids. And I opened this one up too. They were both sealed. These are $3.25. And I checked the seal and they all look good. None of them are dry or nothing. Still in good shape. Now they didn't have just a whole lot of them, but I'm sure what happened is somebody probably went to a an auction or maybe a estate sale or something and somebody had all these lids. Now I found this bag and you see it's got some older lids in here but the whole bag was four dollars. This regular lids here with the rings 
was not open, but I did open it because I looked at them. It's a whole box. There's none missing. Um, not sure how old these are. This one goes back. It talks about the 30th edition of the Blue Ball book. Ball Blue book, sorry. And um, I think it was like $3.50 back then. But I can't get really any date on it that I see. But anyways, I opened them up. And they all look good. So I got a really good buy on this one. $4 for the whole bag. Now, they've got these uh, syringes in here and needles. And what they, these are for is for uh, injecting stuff, you know, stuff into your turkeys. And, but that's not, I didn't even want them, but I will use them. This one right here, this one was kind of interesting. These are Polyvac Mason Jar Home Canning Lids, Wide Mouth. And these are just a little bit different, but these were made in New Zealand. All these others, of course, made in the uh, United States, but these come from New Zealand. So I thought that was kind of cool. But um, when I opened it up, there's not 12 in here, but that's okay. But you can see these are a little bit, the seals feel kind of dry on them, so I don't know that I would use these. Now, the seals are a different color than what we make here in the United States. And if anybody can tell me that's from New Zealand and have had these, maybe you can you know, tell me a few things about them. The seals still feel good. But they do feel a little bit, a little bit drier than the others. I think if worse come to worse, I'd use them. I wouldn't be afraid of them. Because they're either going to seal or they're not going to seal. One or the other. So, I thought that was pretty neat. And this was in there too. This is a pretty old box of wide mouth mason dome lids. And right here on the side, the ball blue book, uh, I think that says 29th edition, was a dollar. But when I got to looking through these, you can see how these are a different color. So, but they're care. So I don't know if I should use them or if they're okay. Maybe it's just was the color of the seal because the seal feels good. It's not dry rot or nothing. And they've not been used. These right here are fine. I looked them over, so they're all good. So I will be using these. So that whole bag was $4. So I come out of there with some extra jar lids. <laughs> they may be old, but they're still good. Let's see, I got me another jar with the old antique um, zinc lid on it. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put all my my buttons in it. I had a friend that also got me a, a jar of buttons at a flea market and uh, I'm going to put them in here too. I like these jars like this with the lids like this too. And it was a, good, a pretty good price. So it was $5. Not too bad. Then I found this book for $3. It's a cookbook. And it says, Busy Woman Slow Cooker Cookbooks. Cookbook. Meals ready and waiting. Now, somebody may have this cookbook. But I looked through it, and it's got some really good recipes in it for slow cooker. So, for $3, I thought that was pretty good. 
so the other thing we bought was a new kerosene lamp here because we needed one more for the cabin. If we have to go off grid, I think we're good now. And the reason we chose this one is because this base is really heavy. A lot of them you find are just, now this is not the original. It doesn't, it didn't go with it. But this part right here is good and, and heavy. You won't be able to knock it over. We give $20 for it. So it was a pretty good buy. So we went ahead and got it. It's pretty tall. So I think we're good on kerosene lamps now. Last but not least, we come home with this old rocker. And I don't know how old this rocker is. What would you say, Mr. Brown? I honestly don't have a clue. It's <laughs> not it's not super old, but it's it's a nice rocker. I was impressed of how even a rocker it is and how it just keeps the rocking all on its own. Now, we was in need of another rocker and we wanted another antique one. So and we didn't go in there to buy a rocker, but there was a good price on this one and we both liked it. When you sit in it, it's comfortable. It, the back of it kind of curves just enough. It's not curved, but it curves just a little enough that it fits your back. So, we come home with that. And keeps it rocking. It just keeps it rocking. <laughs> Mr. Brown sit down in it, and you'll see how it creaks. You remember how the old rocking chairs would creak? Now, that would put a baby to sleep. Pat its little bottom. Now, it, it may creep too much. We may have to do something about that, but. I think you use it a bit. But it creeps. Yeah, it does. So, that was our flea market find. Now, we're going to. We're going to taste some pie. Okay. We're going to taste the butterscotch. Rain pie. I've been tasting mine's about gone. <laughs> this is already gone. It don't it don't take very long for me to get rid of a piece of pie. Especially butterscotch. It's really good. The feeling's firm and it's good. It's creamy. It tastes like it's like butterscotch. It's really good. It's uh -huh. really good. The uh, cash, have... cash lobbers are good. <laughs> Yuck. And I told them if they didn't like meringue, they could leave it all, put whipped cream or something on it, and it'd be good too. Y'all had to try this recipe. It's really good. Uh, butterscotch pie has been around for many, many years, and uh, it's always been a favorite in a lot of households. So y'all try it. So it was good to see everybody, talk to everybody. I didn't get to see you, but I got to talk to you. <laughs> you got to see us, though. Mr. Brown is cleaning his plate here. You can have mine, too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess we'll see y'all in a couple days. Hope y'all liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, y'all have a good... Uh, rest of the weekend. Be safe. And God bless everybody. Behave. <laughs> Goodbye.